Thanks for joining everyone. We'll be starting in just one minute. Hi everyone, thanks for joining us today. Before we get started, if you'd like to ask a question at any point during the webinar, you can enter it in the questions control of the webinar control panel. We'll then answer all your questions uh, as and when we are able to. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to Michael. Thank you, Tom. Hello everybody. Uh, uh, my name is Michael Hopper. I'm Development Operations Director uh, at ADS and also responsible for our shared products. And one of these shared products is the reporting portal that uh, provides a uh, uh, consolidated, organized view of all your different reporting. And I'm glad that I can uh, present you this uh, development which has matured over the last years and we thought it's time to do a webinar about this. So what is the problem? Why have we built this? Well, one, uh, we got many requests from customers uh, telling us, well, we have uh, many different reporting sources. Uh, we because the products are some simply have different reporting requirements. So for CM4D, it's mainly PDF, sometimes with as some customers with hundreds of pages, while uh, most other reports, uh, some on inspect are more classical reports and SQL Server reporting services. Uh, but uh, you could use uh, the data and uh, from all products and use uh, Power BI to get some dashboards or some customers have Tableau to have some dashboards. Uh, but the result is that you have to go to many, many different places uh, just to do your day work, which is of course not good and confusing and uh yeah it's not 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 a good uh, user experience so uh and furthermore your the our previous advanced reporting service could connect here to a sql server ssrs server sql server reporting service uh, but if you have multiple if you have one in uh uh in uh Texas, for example, and another one in Amsterdam, then it's it's hard to get all your data together. So the idea and one of the core functionalities here is to take all the different reporting services, uh, reporting sources, and provide you with a, a consolidated list of reports that uh, is in a, a unique uh, framework so you can, and you can build the company reporting structure. Uh, you can predefine parameters. Uh, some reports have many, many parameters. Some of them are actually not in use in your company, so you can hide them and reduce the complexity. I will show you that in a minute. But one of the other core functionalities is that you can organize your reports by usage, not by origin. So for example, this Lego Man folder both contains inspect and CM4D reports. 
all the defect analysis three months contains inspect and a Power BI report. Before we go into the actual display, uh, we are, I will, I will, let's first have a look on the configuration. And so take over the configuration manager where the reporting portal fits in. And uh, yeah, let's open it. And maybe start already with a menu. This uh, we have here a couple of folders. You can have any level you want to. Uh, and we can make a new demo. Oh, better. Webinar reports. So and now I can I can pick my reporting sources. I have here one inspect server. You can connect to multiple. And yeah, we can just use use a few simple like the report usage. Just drag and drop. No. Okay, computer freezes. Okay, the complete, I will. Ah, uh, the complete Chrome is frozen. Uh, so let's start with a fresh Chrome. Here we are again. Okay, that's how it should work. We have here our report usage and report usage by user report. Reports have a, have a couple of parameters. This one has just a few. But if I go, for example, to a concern ranking, then this this report has quite a lot. Uh, so I can uh, set default values, pick values here, and I can also hide certain parameters. I can put them to read only, and I can make multiple variants of my report. So for example, I have here defect anal analysis three months. Uh, this one uh, fixes uh, the time period to three months, uh, but it will, we also decided here on the last webinar, not to have the defect error group station as a parameter, not to have the shift. And you will see that, that these are actually gone and then uh, we put this one to read only. Okay, so uh, by doing this, you can you can really build uh, build your reporting, your setup in the way uh, you need it's needed for your daily work. You can also, also define time periods, only one allowed on this report, but multiple here, and oh, this is a, 
Not one with parameters, multiple here. And these time periods can be modified. So you can configure this according to your to your needs. So it's not a fixed fixed list anymore here. If I have a look on the reporting sources, we have three configured here. We have a CM, CM4D, generated reports. We have a Power BI connection uh, to a Power BI workspace using a service principle. You can find more information here in the, about these parameters in the under ATS minus help, uh, under the documentation. And we have here connectivity to one SQL Server reporting service. Uh, in addition, we, we also support at the moment Tableau, Inspect Cat report servers, and what makes it quite flexible. You can, in principle, or also connect to any web page you have. So, uh, but let's have a look on the how do, how does that look now for the user? This was the the view of the uh, of the operator uh, of the administrator. Uh, the user has here the list of reports that is provided by his uh, uh, by the administrator or the engineer setting up the system. Uh, and uh, you see already we have here an, uh, an inspect report and a Power BI dashboard side by side. You have everything in one place with a similar, similar setup. If I have a look here on the concern ranking, I just have the three months and I have removed here the shift. It's sometimes hard to really understand, to really uh, yeah, use all of these parameters. You can reduce that complexity. Uh, but that's not not all. You uh, so up. Uh, okay, here we are again. You you might have noticed already these stars. You can set up your own favorites. So I can make this, for example, an additional favorite. So I have three favorites here at the moment. But with the normal reporting, with a couple of reports you do have, this might be a bit, also a bit, yeah, uh, difficult to use, too much overview. If you have 20 favorites, it's hard to find, so you can, can build uh, build your own structure here, and while this is the uh, should save it, while this is the company structure, this is actually your own structure of the reports you actually need. And similar to the uh, yeah, so similar to the to the parameters we uh, parameter settings you have for in the configuration 
uh, you can also build build your own setup. So here I have a concern ranking without much uh, restrictions. It's just that it's only for the Lego men because we and we have put that into the Lego men group. Uh, but I can uh, do right. Think do we have per values here? I can set my different time period. And uh, and save this. Uh, and see, we have here a variant of the report with my parameters. If I go here, I have the standard parameter. If I go here, uh, if I go to this, I have the parameters I have set. And uh, of course, uh, I can have that, these variants also in my favorites. So it's quite flexible to build exactly the reporting you do need. It is integrated in ATS security and configuration. You've already seen the configuration manager integration, but ATS security gives you the possibility to have your own uh, users or local users, how we call it, but also to use an Active Directory or an Azure Active Directory, any uh, SAML provider, uh, Google, if your company is using Google for authentication like some do, uh, to, uh, to give uh, people access, and then you can configure or uh, the security independent from all your different sources. All of them have different security models. This is unified in a single one. I jumped there already. You select your favorites. You organize your own menu. You do make your own variants. Okay, so you have your own reports. So what now? Because you're, you might uh, might want to share. You might want to share this, the results of this report uh, with your colleague. And of course, you can export to different formats. The different formats depends a lot on the on what is available on the reporting source. But here I can select PDF and it take a few seconds and then I do have my PDF here. But I can also go via this link and uh, create uh, a link to the clipboard and paste it somewhere, send it by mail, and uh, it will bring you to the same report with exactly the same parameter set uh, you saved this uh, hyperlink for. So this, uh, this is how you can easily share your findings either fixed or by uh, sending out a hyperlink that that is then uh, dynamically 
evaluated. So if new data comes in, the hyperlink will always show the latest data. The exported uh, report, of course, wouldn't. Uh, do we have to... Uh, Okay, the token is expired, had it open already for quite a long time before. Let's log in again. Okay, uh, but uh, Sharing reports is not the only thing we need. We also need to need to be able to uh, uh, to uh, schedule reports. And while most well, several reporting sources have all their own solution, we have built a shared solution here uh, that is independent from the reporting source. And we can send out reports either via email or to a file share. Oh, I forgot to stop. Are there in the previous already, uh, in the previous part already questions, Tom? No, we don't have any questions at this time. Okay, we don't have any questions yet. Okay. So the uh, distributed distribution of reports via a scheduler is here in the uh, reporting uh, scheduler part. And I have already scheduled a couple of reports. Actually, it's still pretty much in demo mode because it's still exports every 50 minutes, runs here and send that at the moment to a file system. But you could as well send it out via email. So you build your parameter set up front. Your scheduling options are quite normal well, uh, what what you know for when you do, for example, a recurring meeting in Teams or other applications. So by our daily, weekly, and select days of a week when it should be ex executed, and then this report is just automatically executed and sent out in the export format that you have for, that you have chosen as a PDF or quite frequently they also will be Excel. It's not that uncommon to export to Excel or, and to use that functionality again to do some further analysis on the data. So, uh, the security manager integration, I mentioned that already. Uh, the uh, Yeah, I haven't saved this. So, we do have here in reporting portal our user rights, and these user rights can contain what we call a security class. So you group your reports and security classes that is is hierarchical. So if you assign a security class to a folder, it's automatically inherited to all reports and folders inside that. So it's quite simple to set up uh, the correct security. Yeah, and then this is just assigned to roles and users and as a, in a 
easy to use integration with uh, a very flexible security solution that can connect to what what actually whatever ever you have here as some of this missing here the list but it's also supported but it's not about security manager this webinar there will be a different one but how to install it uh, you can for sure install it as windows services and our expectation is that most installations this and next year will be still windows services uh, but it could be also docker container if you have a container infrastructure both windows and linux based because these are all a dot and five application that can run on different application uh, operating systems uh, or you can use another hosting service like azure app services and uh, actually the uh, the report uh, that that uh, the ver what you have seen here in the demo is hosted in Azure, so it's not a not a local installation. And if you use a reverse proxy like Nginx, you can easily publish it in a secure way on the internet and use it from wherever you are. But you, of course, can still also install it as a Windows service and use it, for example, as a via a VPN. So, but there, honestly, using it in a Docker or an app service gives you a couple of more monitoring options because the infrastructure simply has them to see how how your system is running and uh, how much resources it's using which is possible but not that easy centrally with the windows service okay and this brings us already pretty close to the end uh, because we're three minutes left uh, what's next we do have uh, uh, we do have support for uh, uh, for CM4D generated reports. I haven't shown you that yet. So we have here a view on a depository. We have here a view on a depository with a template filter and uh, you can easily get access to the P to the pdfs here see them download them uh, in a, a quite simple user interface uh, what we're missing uh, so far is the support for what cm4d calls the web reports so to generate your reports on the fly uh, this comes next. This is currently in development. Uh, we also got feedback that uh, not everyone wants to or uh, wants to invest, for example, SQL Server reporting service as it's not as uh, cheap as it has been. So we are currently evaluating the option to build at least for small installations. Uh, to include a report builder and uh, in the dashboard builder uh, to do uh, reports locally in the system. Uh, yeah, this uh, brings us actually to the end uh, and open for questions. You can also contact me for questions or send questions later uh, to ATS Marketing and we will we will answer them. So Tom, still no questions? 
Uh, no, no questions. Okay, we had a lot of this morning. <laughs> so then, then I will just answer a few from this morning uh, if you have a thought about it, because we have uh, the question was there about the licensing model. It is licensed by you uh, by a uh, concurrent user. Uh, but this is this was more or less already the case in the past, uh, as we had uh, concurrent li concurrent license, uh, for example, for the inspect report. So not much change there, and we will just exchange the licensing uh, the licenses you have for the individual products. Uh, and you will only need one license here. So a license for inspect also counts for CM4D. We don't make any change there. If there are no questions at all, then yeah, we come to an no, end no with, with one minute overrun. <laughs> okay, thanks, and Michael. Thank you, um, thank you very much for attending. Yep, as uh, Michael said, if you do have any questions about reporting portal or anything else, you can reach Michael on those uh, details or contact us through your standard ATS contact or uh, contact marketing. Um, so all that's mm -hmm. left for me to say is thank you for attending and have a great day. <laughs>